We are continuing our mission to try and find the best hot end or hot end nozzle combination for the X1 series and P1 series of printers. And in the previous video, I tested out the stock hot end versus the E3D Obsidian High Flow hot end against the Slice Mako. This is the new version with the aluminum fan housing. And you can see here, this one has the nozzle that you can replace. So it does save quite a bit of cost because you're only replacing this piece. So we went over that in the previous video in quite a bit of detail. I will link that video up there if you haven't checked it out already. But there is still one more hot end to test out. And that is a partnership between Bichu and E3D. And they have these, which are called the Revo. This one is for the P1 series printers. And this is the one that I had from the previous video. Unfortunately, I don't have a P1, I just have the X1 printer. So I could not use this, we could only look at it. And I have this one now, which is actually wired up correctly for the X1C printer, so we can actually install this. Now I should mention the wires are a little bit mangled, that's because I've already had this installed once, and you can see that there's a little bit of residue on the bottom here. I will make sure to put on the plastic repellent because all my previous tests were done with the sliced plastic repellent as well. So the way this system works is it has this heater which encircles the nozzle and this nozzle, you push this up and the nozzle will unscrew and you can swap these out. It looks like that, so it's quite long. So you can see one of the big differences already between this and the Mako is that this one can be swapped when it's hot or when it's cold as well. Probably better when it's cold or just warm because you're gonna get your hands near this area too. It's wrapped with silicone and the colors indicate the size of the nozzle. Now one of the biggest benefits of this system, which is called the Revo, is the sheer amount of different choices you have for these nozzles. So there are 41 different options. They're not all gonna be compatible with the bamboo printers because this is kind of a universal system. This is just set up for this particular printer. So from E3D, you can buy all of these different types of nozzles. There are obsidian nozzles, there are diamondback nozzles, there are tons of different sizes, going all the way from 0.015 millimeters, which is minuscule, all the way up to 1.4 millimeters. So I don't know another system that has that kind of a range, so there's a lot of variety, and of course you should be able to find exactly what you need for your particular application if you go to something like this. So this one here is just a 0.4 millimeter brass stock kind of nozzle. This one here is a 0.6 millimeter and it says high flow. This one is a 1.4, so it is absolutely massive. Again, it's saying high flow. So that should mean that inside it has that tri-separation system, kind of like what Bontech has done as well. You can see, look at the size of that, it's massive. So this is the obsidian coating. And this one here has an orange Oh, yep, yeah, it is a different color, okay. So that's good. So the orange indicates a 1.4, and I have a 1.2 here as well. Again, it says high flow. <clears throat> and we have a violet or purple color. So if we unscrew this one, Looking pretty sweet, I have to say. Now you notice the channel that's up here, it's pretty much the same as the stock one from Bamboo. This has to be routed up this channel here. So in order to do that, we need to rotate this thing around and it tends to only want to rotate one direction easily. And it kind of folds back on itself and up this channel. And then we can install the fan right over top of it. And I'm just gonna borrow the fan from the stock even though I really like that fan from Slice. I'm pretty sure that the spring that's behind here serves two purposes and not just one. It keeps the heater in position against the base of the nozzle, the lowest point of the nozzle that it can go so that it's in the right spot. But then also, if I unscrew this, you can see that it's kind of locked on to the heat sink and that way this doesn't just fall off and flop around. So it's in position, ready for the nozzle to be installed easily. 
So something didn't quite seem right with the wire sticking out and it turns out that I had to turn this sideways, but originally I had it pointed out this way and that wouldn't have worked because we have the gap at the back here, but we don't have any gaps anywhere else. So it has to come out the back. So let's see how this comes off. Oh, that's, yeah, that comes off really easily. If you go on the E3D website, they sell all types of parts for these Rebo kits, and this is a 60 watt, but it has different connectors on the end, so this would be more generic, but they're available in 40 watt on the E3D website, or they're available in 60 watt as well. So with this being the 60 watt, this should be a little bit more powerful heater, and we should be able to get to a higher max flow. I'm gonna apply the plastic repellent. I normally print with higher temperature materials, so occasionally I will forget to open the door when I'm printing with PLA, and sometimes I end up getting a nozzle clog from heat creep. Now it happened to me a few times with the Slice Mako, even with that new aluminum fan. So I do consider it to be a pretty big bonus to be able to have my prints finished without having to worry about it. So to test that on the Revo, I printed each of these push ticks. These are all printed from basic PLA, the same material I've been using in all my testing videos. And they were all printed with the door closed. And I ended up having no problems at all with heat creep, no nozzle clogs at all. So at least from my testing so far, this design is much better to prevent heat creep. I have the 0.4 millimeter nozzle mounted in the printer and we can test the max volumetric flow. Now this is the brass high flow nozzle. And basically the easiest way to spot whether it's high flow or not is if it has that additional little ring there, you can see that is the insert that's made. If you don't have that extra ring there, it's just a standard brass version. So it should be able to get pretty high on this. The test here is from 25 millimeters cubed per second to 40 millimeters cubed per second. And I have the identical spool of basic PLA from my previous testing video, which has been pre-dried and it's actually still in the dryer as well. So we're at 23.67, so we can just round that up just to make it easy to 24. We times that by 0.5, so that's 12, and we can add it to the starting number, which was 25. So we're up around 37 or 36 and three quarter for max volumetric flow, which means that this one now takes first place and it reduces the score of all of my other hot ends. I had planned to release this video a few weeks ago, but I was having some extrusion issues on the first layer, which I thought were related to the firmware update, but it turned out that I accidentally loaded in PETG rather than PLA for my first few tests, which meant that the temperature was too low and the flow rate was too high. This isn't normally even possible, but because I'm feeding directly from my dryer, I was bypassing the AMS and the auto detection of material. That trouble ended up being a good thing because it gave me a little bit more time to print with it before I released the video. And over the last few weeks, it has become my go-to hot end for this printer. It ticks off all of the boxes for me. The only area where it might lose a few points is that the initial cost is a little bit high and then the cost of each nozzle is also a little bit higher as well. What I'd like to do now is actually take advantage of one of the other nozzles. Probably just gonna go right for the biggest one here. This is the 1.4 millimeter. So I've never printed with one that's this large. Now the issue that we run into with something like this, if we're gonna use it on the X1C at least, is that Bamboo Studio does not have anything larger than a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. So we're gonna to have to move over and make sure we use Orca Slicer. It's a little bit annoying to have to do that, but it is what it is. Let's swap this out. We'll cut the filament. Let's see if we can unscrew this. So, it's very easy to unscrew, which is nice. This is after 
doing some prints with this one too. In goes the large nozzle. There we go. It's that quick. So that was actually really nice. And it's a little bit dirty on the bottom, but not too bad. This is going to be a one-tenth scale version of something I'm going to be building for outside. So that'd be kind of a neat experiment. It's not really that critical whether it turns out perfectly or not, because this is that 1.4 millimeter nozzle. You can see I've got it going there and it is extruding a lot of material at once. I do have it set to, I think, 34 millimeters cubed per second. So it is able to extrude quite a good volume of material. And so far the quality looks pretty good, although I do have scarf seams turned on and at the back I don't think it looks that good on the overhang, but the rest of it seems like it's doing all right. I went into this lowering my expectations to close to zero. I didn't think this would turn out at all actually. I've only printed with up to 0.8 millimeters for nozzle size on any of my printers. Let's pop it off and check the seam. Oh, that actually looks a lot better than I was expecting. It did have a little bit of trouble, you can see on the overhangs there, and down at the bottom the same thing, but the seam actually does not look too bad. So this is a scarfed seam. I think it was set to 10 millimeters, so not too bad. Well, that's interesting, you can see the bottom there. So a little bit under extruded, it looks like on the bottom layer. Top layer looks great. These are pretty cool and they're pretty hefty as well. So I am gonna print two more of these and then I'll show you what it is that I'm working on. And this one is number three. I had the door completely open on this print. Yep, still a little bit of an issue on the overhangs, but not too bad. This is printed with a 0.2 millimeter layer height. This one was door open as well, but not quite as far. These two look very similar to me. The door all the way open looked the best. And this one here, it's probably a little bit difficult to pick up, but there's some more irregularities on this one. Obviously the print finished, but this one was printed with the door completely closed and on all these prints, the top was on as well. So these are for a mock-up that I'm creating for a rain barrel setup for the side of our house. And eventually I'll have one at both sides of our home and probably one off of the back of our shed as well. That way I don't need to use city water for watering any of our plants. These are also gonna be up on the stand quite high, about 36 inches or so, about 900 millimeters. And that way we get a decent amount of head pressure and we can supply water to anywhere on our property from a garden hose if we want to. And I won't go into great detail about this at this point, but these are all gonna be connected together. That way they are all at the exact same level at all times as well. And because I mainly print structural parts, having that larger nozzle size available to me gives me the ability to print thicker infill, giving me an overall stronger part. It also allows me to print faster as well. I will lose some precision, but luckily most of my structural prints don't have much detail anyway. And this, well, as you can see, it actually worked out pretty well. So this one was printed with variable layer height. Anytime I had an overhang, I changed it to a little bit shallower, but Otherwise, it's a 0.6 millimeter layer height. So again, experimenting with things I've never done before. Bottom still looks about the same as before. The seam, not quite as nice as before, but again, the layer height is higher. I had a little bit of a cooling issue because I'm extruding so much material. It seemed to be having a bit of trouble keeping up. So I might need to do something about the fan in there to be able to print something like this at a good speed. It looks like the top layer had a little bit of an issue with under extrusion too. I definitely need to go through the process of calibrating this filament though. Let's see how strong this thing is. <laughs> wow. That's a good amount of force and it's not breaking. doesn't even look deformed at all. That's pretty cool. So that could be pretty useful. So if you're looking for a hot end with the highest max volumetric flow rate, more nozzle sizes, more materials and coatings than anything else out there, I would definitely recommend this one over any of the other ones that I've tested. 
The quick swapping when the nozzle is warm or cold is really nice, but in my case, it's also important to be able to print with the door closed without the worry of having a clog. As always, if you'd like to help support the channel and you're in the market for a printer or printer accessories, I have a very short list of products below in the video description that I've tested and I use it in my shop all the time. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying this type of content. Thank you to each of my patrons for helping to support this channel and making videos like these possible. Thank you for watching, take care, and I hope to see you on the next one. Well, another thing I can't say I've ever had to do, I'm gonna roll back the firmware on this printer. I have wasted so much time trying to get this to work. So in the Bamboo Handy app, you can go to Devices, go to the top three horizontal bars, firmware version, and then I wanna to downgrade to a previous version, and then just pick your version that you wanna to downgrade to. Looks like there's quite a few options there. And it's in progress. Okay, well I reluctantly, very reluctantly, did an entire factory reset and I've done all the calibration again. Nope, still no good. Still no good, wow.